Well, joining us now from London to discuss where this conflict is at is Dr Marcus Papadopoulos, who is the publisher of Politics First and an international commentator on Syria and British politics. Uh, Dr Papadopoulos, thank you very much for joining us. As we heard there that despite this UN intervention, there seems to be no let up, there seems to be no ceasefire. How do we work our way out of this international mess? Well, first of all, please allow me to clarify the nature of the people whom the Syrian army is targeting in East Ghouta. The Syrian army is targeting Islamist terrorists, al-Qaeda affiliates, the same people, ideologically speaking, who carried out the horrendous Bali massacre. And I sincerely hope you are telling the Australian public that. Now, since 2012, the people of East Ghouta have lived under the occupation of al-Qaeda affiliates, and they have been suffering tremendously every, every single day for the last six years. The massacres that the terrorists in East Ghouta have been inflicting on the civilian population is so horrendous that I really shouldn't talk about it on live uh, television. And also as well, I find it quite rich that Western mainstream media is now talking about the suffering of the people in East Ghouta. Well, where was Western mainstream media in the last six years when the inhabitants of that region have been suffering so terribly at the hands of terrorists who are being backed by the Americans and the British? And let us not forget as well, on a daily basis for the last six years, the terrorists in East Ghouta have been mortaring and have been firing rockets into Damascus. They have been aiming at schools, hospitals, nurseries. Indeed, last week, they killed a large number of children. So I think it is quite rich and, frankly speaking, disgraceful that Western media is talking about a humanitarian um, uh, concern in relation to East Ghouta. But would it not be naive to say that Syria's treatment of its civilians is equally as bad? I mean, we've only seen in this attack yesterday the use of chemical weapons, chlorine gas. You are relying on the white helmets and no proper legitimate court of law in the world would rely on the white helmets. Why? Because the white helmets are a propaganda weapon. They are a propaganda weapon of the terrorists and they are the brainchild of the British government. And at the same time, even worse than being a propaganda tool, the white helmets are actually Isl Is Islamist terrorist fighters themselves. We have independent witnesses we have independent footage of white helmet individuals standing over the bodies of dead Syrian soldiers, of them firing AK-47s, of them firing RPGs. You must not rely on the white helmets. The white helmets are a propaganda tool and they are terrorists themselves. You have recently tweeted that, uh, and I think you touched on that a little earlier, that the terrorists occupying East Ghouta are the same people, ideologically speaking, who carried out the London, Manchester, Madrid, Paris and Bali bombings. Uh, they are murderers who are being backed by the US and the UK for geostrategic reasons. Can you expand on that for us? Absolutely. For many decades now, the Americans and the British have had a very close relationship with radical Islam. They backed the Mujahideen, including Osama bin Laden, against the Soviets in Afghanistan. They facilitated the arrival of the Mujahideen, including Osama bin Laden, to Bosnia during the Bosnian Civil War. They assisted the various al-Qaeda affiliates in Libya in 2011 in their attempt to topple uh, Colonel Gaddafi. And they are supporting uh, Islamist terrorist groups in Syria. And the Islamist terrorist groups in Syria are not just ISIS, not just al-Qaeda, but also the free Syrian army. And the Syrian army is actually comprised of the people of Syria. It is comprised of Sunnis, of Shia, of um, Christians, of Druze, of Kurds, of Armenia. The Syrian army does not target its own people. The Syrian army is targeting terrorists, the very people who want to massacre Australians in Sydney and Canberra. Well, they're controversial comments, uh, to say the least. Uh, we'll, we'll, well, discuss... they're controversial in your opinion. In your opinion. 
They're not controversial to people in East Aleppo. If you go to East Aleppo today, which was under the control of al-Qaeda, they will say, my comments are controversial. They will say, you are controversial. Well, we're, just, we're just looking at the, thousands, the many thousands of civilians who have died at the hands of the Syrian government. Whose sources, whose sources are you relying on when you say the many thousands of people who have died? The White Helmet, I've already explained to you, the White Helmet are not a genuine um, uh, humanitarian organisation. They are, they are a propaganda weapon. They are Islamist terrorist fighters themselves. Donald Trump, in his State of Union address, says he's uh, quashed ISIS once and for all. What would be your response to those comments? Well, I don't think Donald Trump has a clue about what's happening in Syria. Indeed, he hasn't, he hasn't a clue about what's happening in his own country. The reason why ISIS is on the verge of a total defeat in Syria is because of the combined military operations of the Syrian military, the Russian military and the Iranian military. And quite frankly speaking, the world should be grateful for what Syrian soldiers are doing every single day of the week. They are sacrificing their lives to defeat the scourge, the evil that is Islamist terrorism. Every single step the Syrian army advances in Syria makes the streets of Sydney, of London, of Washington and Paris safer. So will they support a ceasefire? Will they take part in the ceasefire? Who? Would support a ceasefire. The Syrian army, will they take part in the ceasefire? Will they abide by the UN commands? The Syrian government has been participating in talks to bring about ceasefires all over Syria. And the Syrian government cares for one thing, its people. And if it can facilitate a ceasefire somewhere in Syria, whereby the terrorists move to, for example, Idlib, then the Syrian government will do that, which I think is quite remarkable. But please, let me remind you, the people the Syrian army is fighting in East Ghouta are al-Qaeda affiliates, the same people, ideologically speaking, who massacred Australians in cold blood in Bali. All right, Dr. Marcus uh, Papadopoulos, we do appreciate you joining us uh, this evening. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.